Hi everyone and welcome to the Road to Indie TV. I'm JP Mantrola and of course with me, Tristan Vautier. Tristan, Long Beach, California for the second race of the Indie Lights. Yes, what a weekend, uh, JP. I mean, amazing location, amazing track. The racing was just so great. I mean, it's, um, it's a special venue. It's a bit yeah. like the Grand Prix of Monaco of IndyCar racing. It's not only the cars, but it is becomes a really a good party for everybody, from family, everybody. Yes, exactly. And I mean, the racing we had, we had was amazing. I mean, this battle between Gabi Chavez and Zach Vich, I mean... He started, he started good from qualify. Yes, three people improving in the last lap of qualifying. Alex Baron, the Frenchman, was on pole for a few minutes before the end. We saw he had it wrapped up. And finally, Mathieu Brabham, Gabi Chavez, Zach Vich will pass him in the last lap. Big drama. I mean, yeah. the top four drivers covered in seven hundredths of a second. I think we have Johnny Baker in the house also. Johnny, are you there? Yeah, I'm back, guys. I'm uh, a little disappointed you didn't invite me to Long Beach, California, but um, you see, okay. I told you, yeah. don't don't give him the frame because didn't every time get, he asks yeah. for stuff. Didn't we get you some pictures, a new mug? You I get mean, a new uh, you mug for your tea. Yeah, okay. coffee cup, got my nice cup of tea. Um, yep, Damon and Nigel time. on the wall. Very You're impressive. You're acting like that. a diva. Oh, com that's rich coming from you, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's talk about the race. We started on Saturday with the testing, and then we went to qualify. Yeah. I mean, Alex Baron surprised me by the speed. Yeah, started fourth. I mean, he, he was the big step up from St. Petersburg, I think. And then, yeah, the race, I mean, from the start, it was exciting. Just like St. Pete, uh, the guy who starts second passes for the lead on the start. Gabi Chavez, great start, passes Zagvich on the outside. Same move as Zagvich did to him in St. Petersburg. I mean, I so think, much drama. I think there was some teamwork going on. If you go back and look at the footage, it looks like Baron is almost bump drafting Chavez into turn yeah, one. It was I cool. I think the Bellardi team um, gambled on putting less wing on the cars than Andretti Autosport. So their cars will be faster in the straight line and they will be able to pass on the start. That's, that's a trick that has been hmm. famous in Long Beach because that first straight line is so long that a bit less wing can make a big difference. Now you need to compensate on the braking uh, if you are going for a faster... Uh, or exactly, less wing, less grip. So the car slides around a little more. That could potentially explain why Gabi Chavez's pace dropped down a little bit halfway through the race. Yeah, he's I mean, starting he, losing started, he started with a gap of over two seconds. Yeah. And he was like that for a while until yeah. Zach started catching up and catching up. Exactly. I think with less downforce, the car slides around a little more. So you have more tire wear. And I think that's what happened halfway through the race. Zagvich started catching him. We thought he was going to get him, but Gabi responded. Just like, just like we discussed in last, last episode's technical uh, episode. You know, we, that's true. You that's run, true. You exactly. run, you yeah. know, if you're, if you're in position, you've got track position, you want to have some more wing, get a consistent race car, and you need to make up time, take some wing out. And I think that's what Gabi and Pilati Auto Racing did. And the gamble did. worked. Yeah, it paid what off. What about Matthew Brabham? Matthew Brabham I hit mean, the wall three times and he still managed to be third. He is so much fun to watch. I mean, his onboards are always very impressive. He's pushing so hard. I think you know what's happening. He, he has less experience than Zach and Gabby in the car. So, I mean, he has a lot of talent and he's pushing very hard to compensate for his lack of experience. And that makes it very exciting because his onboards are always great it, to watch. He's always on the edge. It was and, great to watch. He was yeah. hanging that rear end out. I mean, it was. It was lots of flair in his driving in uh, last weekend. Yeah. You know, I, I, I gotta say something. During the Long Beach, California race, uh, we spent the weekend there and uh, I was lucky to be with a Tristan that knows pretty much everything around the, the racing. So I have always heard about this terminology, paddock, pit lane, and grid. So I was completely lost on what it is and actually uh, we put together a little video about showing you what actually each one of those things are. So, do you want to take, take a, look? a look? We're here in Long Beach, California for the second race of the Indy Lights. The first run in St. Petersburg was amazing and this one is going to be even more exciting. Let's show you around. So Tristan, what the changes you can do in the pit lane? Very minimal changes. As you can see, the teams only have this little pit cart with them with a limited amount of tools and spare parts. They have a spare front wing, a spare rear wing, the wheels, and that's about all you can change. If you break a wing, you can change it in the pits. You can change the wheels, but 
The major work is done in the paddock. If you really break the car, you're going to have to bring it back to the paddock. It's a very dangerous area. There is other cars going around. It's very busy. So not the best place to do big changes on the car. So it looks really uh, a stressful environment. Everybody's in a rush, moving around here and there. How difficult it is to work with so many things moving at the same time? Well, the mechanics have to be very aware of what's going on around them. As you can see, the cars are lined up behind each other, and when they get out of their spot, they get very close to the car in front. So the mechanics have to be very careful and really look at what's going around them. Everything here is, is against the time, is that right? Yeah, exactly. It's a rush all the time in pit lane. All right, can you show me more around? Of course, let's go. As Tristan was showing you the pit lane, I'm right now what is called the paddock. Tristan, what is really the paddock? Uh, the paddock, I'd say, is where the teams set camp. That's where they have their trailers, that's where they have their big infrastructure to work on the cars. They have all their tools, all their wheels, all of their engineering offices inside of their trailers. So it's basically like a garage where they can work, right? It's like a garage, yeah. That's where they have everything they need to do the major work on the car. Tristan, I understand the pit lane, the paddock, but we are actually not in either the pit lane or the paddock. What we're, are they doing here? We're in the middle of the street. I don't know. Well, those cars actually, there's always a transition period between going from the paddock to the pit lane. So on some tracks, it will be called the pre-grid. When it's on a street course like this, they just line up the cars in the street, waiting for the pit lane to open. Right now, the Indy cars were on track. They're leaving pit lane. So when the pits are free, they're going to open the gate to pit lane and these cars will just roll to pit lane at the right order. So Tristan looks like there's only two minutes for the race. So why don't we just get our position to enjoy this fantastic Grand Prix. Let's go. The trucks, the flags, the people what walking in the paddock. Yeah. It's, it's really, it's a busy environment, really stressful. Sometimes I feel like overwhelmed by the stress because the teams are moving really fast. But at the same time, it's really fun and to be around. And that setup was smaller than usual. I mean, USF 2000 and Pro Mazda weren't there this weekend. That's true, that's true. That, I mean, it, it, get, it, it can get really crazy, it but it was really, really fun to yeah. walk around. Coming back to Indy Lights, I mean, what a battle. Gabby gets away with the win. Um, tight battle, Zach Beach second, they're so tight in points. Johnny, Johnny, Johnny how's the, the standings so far? Yeah, points after two rounds, we got Zach Beach 93 with Chavez just one point back with 92 points. So what's this one point uh, extra that Zach Beach got? I think he's got the he's got an additional fastest lap, which is just the difference between the two, which really shows how close Andretti will to explore bloody auto racing. Are. So if somebody else take the fastest lap, they will be tied right now for first place, is that correct? That's correct, yep. yeah. And I think wow. it's, it's interesting to note Schmidt Peterson Motorsports, who've had, who've had a tough start to the season, I think it's fair to say, Tristan, your old stable grounds, but we've got Jack Harvey third in points with 67 and Luis Razia fourth with 60. I think they've been making the most of their opportunities so far. Yeah, I think it, they're, they might be struggling a little more than other teams um, to, to get up to speed with the Cooper tires. Um, but I mean, they're a strong team. They won the last yes. four championships. Uh, I think it has been something like three years they've not been on the... It's the first time since three years they've not been on the podium. Wow. So Sam was disappointed with that, I tell you. And these guys, they are winners. I mean, they, they, know, they know how to make it happen. They'll figure it out. Just a matter of how much time, you know. They, they don't want to let um, Gabby, Zach and Matthew, you know, um, take too much advantage early in the season because they're they going to catch them. After they that. have Luis Razia, which is, is really a first driver. Yeah, he drove I mean, Formula has a lot One. Of experience. So they, they have the driver lineup, they have the engineers, they'll figure it out. They, ju they just have to figure it out quick enough. Well, yeah. there's, there's a lot on the line with these scholarship opportunities, you know. These guys just aren't racing for trophies. They're, race, they're racing for their careers. You they know? They're, the they're racing for that's that correct, next step to the Verizon IndyCar Series. $750,000 to take away Let me ask you this. That, that puts Verizon extra IndyCar. pressure on, on a driver, especially in the USF 2000 that you know, I mean, this is my dream. I want to be a race driver. And I have the chance, if I win, to get the sponsor this, this is scholarship money to move on. It's a lot of pressure, but at the same time, it makes things simple in your mind. You know that you have to win uh, to get that money, and with that money, you step up. I mean, it's $250,000 winning the USF 2000 to step up to Pro Mazda. There, if you win, you get half a million dollars to step up to Indy Lights, and if you win Indy Lights, $750,000 to run in the Verizon IndyCar series. Well, so let's this guy's going at it. Let's remind people that this weekend on Long Beach, California was only the Indy Lights. Only them, yeah. Pro Mazda USF 2000, they are in a little break, looking forward for the next race. 
I heard that you actually managed to find someone from the USA 2000 in California. Yeah, I managed to find him and I can tell you, he was doing some really interesting stuff. Oh, let's, let's watch. Take a look, yeah. Hey, we're here in Long Beach, California for the Indy Lights race. This is the Indy Lights paddock and someone told me there was a USF 2000, a French guy, I think, walking around here. What is he doing? Let's find out. Have you seen any USF 2000 driver here? No. Have you seen a USF 2000 driver here, Poppy? Yeah, I've seen that French kid. He's uh, walking over there towards the playground. Okay, thank you. What are you doing, man? What? I'm just what are you doing, man? I'm not racing this weekend, so I'm just training for next week, for next race in Birmingham. Really, Nico? <laughs> really? Okay, okay, we're gonna have a chat. We're gonna come, come with me. So Nico, how did you end up getting involved in racing? Before racing, I was a tennis player. Uh, I started tennis when I was three years old and I played during 12 years. Wow. I had a knee problem which forced me to stop and I saw my father driving so I just wanted to do the same thing. So how did you start? I started uh, in go-kart, of course, at the age of uh, 15. Yeah. I did one year of go-kart, then I directly grew up uh, in single-seater. For one year in Formula 4, the French Championship, then uh, one year in Formula 2 Liter, and this year I come for the American Dream, you know. Alright, yeah, so what brought you here? Um, what, what made you leave Europe and maybe the Formula 1 Dream for, for the IndyCar Dream in USA? Racing in the USA is much more different. Yeah. I think it's more exciting and there is much more opportunities, so I think to buy the car, it's, I prefer to come in the USA. So, and Nico, last question for you. What were you doing down there on these little cars? I was training for my next race in Birmingham. Really, man? But it's a very good training. You look so dumb. I mean, <laughs> you look so dumb. What were you that doing was good. there? I, I want to take you in challenge. Ah, oh, man, I can stoop that low. You, you, you have to. OK, let's go. Go on. Nico, I won the challenge. You didn't. I did. You didn't. Who crossed the line in first when there was checkered flag? You did, but you shit. I what? You put my car in first gear. No, I didn't. You will have a penalty. Let's do another challenge. Okay, okay. I'm gonna be nice. I won the first challenge, but I give you a second chance to beat me. On your mark, get set, go! That's 2-0, Nico. Okay. Let's do one more, and the guy who wins is the champion. Okay. And your marks. That's it. Go! You lost. I did not no, lose. Yeah. I win the first two challenges. Johnny, please. Tristan, Johnny, please. Tristan, she, she what is. was that? Oh, uh, you Wait, stupid hold on. British. Stop. We um, call you when we need you. Okay? All, right, all right, frog legs. Listen. Hey, what's wrong with my legs? They look like a frog. Listen. No. Listen. They're, they're, they're beautifully Listen. hairy. He gave you three chances and you lost. 
No, I he even said it, to you. Not, I gave him a chance. All right, That's never... what happened. And the challenge was wrong. All right, these, Tristan, these Tristan, one you neck in. All yeah. right, let, let's move on. So he just moved from Europe to the United States. He's the first time driving uh, USF 2000. A lot of change uh, in this young boy. It's hard for a Frenchman to get used to America. I can tell you. I can tell you. <laughs> really? It's very difficult. But no, I mean, more seriously. Uh, Nico, very talented uh, young driver, was was um, racing in Formula Renault in, in Europe, which we could consider as the, the equivalent to USF 2000. I think it's harder for young drivers in Europe to find a, a clear path to the top. Um, I mean, that's what the, the Mazda provides right here. Right? Yeah, Mazda Roto Indy, that's what it's all about. And I think that's the main reason uh, why he decided to move. I mean, he, ex he explains it to us. And uh, I think there's a lot of potential for him in, in well, here. Well, it's, it's funny that you, you did have time with a driver because I actually did also have time with a driver this time. <laughs> We're going to see this oh, time. Oh, I'm looking the forward to this one, boys. Yeah, Johnny, sure. why are you laughing already? I haven't even said who it is or anything. JP, because I just know what's coming up. What? <laughs> we're gonna yeah, see okay. you. You know what? We're gonna see you. Just stop it. I'm not gonna say anything. Let's just play the video, okay? Okay. Let's, All right. Let's, let's look hit at the play. Video. Okay. I'm at Anderson Race Park in Palmetto, Florida. Today, I have a special guest for you, Gavi Chavez. We're gonna talk to him and get to know him better. But before that, we're gonna do a little race. Gaby, ¿cómo parte esto de, de involucrarte en el automovilismo? ¿Y, y, qué, ¿Qué pasa por tu cabeza en el minuto que dices, esto es lo que yo quiero hacer? No quiero jugar al soccer, no quiero jugar tenis, quiero, jugar, quiero correr en auto. Yo crecí alrededor del automovilismo siempre, desde, desde, que, tení, desde que nací. O sea, ¿La familia yo, estaba involucrada? En... Es, exactamente, una, una historia ahí más o menos un poco chistosa. Mi, mi mamá se, se dio cuenta que estaba embarazada conmigo, fue después de un accidente que tuvo en una carrera cuando fue a, al hospital entonces yo prácticamente me creé corriendo en la pista entonces algo que pienso que muy pocos o de pronto ninguno ningún piloto puede decir o sea tu madre corría sí del lado de la familia de mi madre uh -huh. eh, mi abuelo mi tío mi tía y mi madre eh, o sea la sangre de, de, de corredor piloto de la, la tiene pero y mi madre ya casada eh, seguía corriendo y no sabía que estaba embarazada y estaba corriendo y ahí estaba el pelga y ahí yo estaba ya ya creando me parece oye y esto parte eh, de tú fuiste en el karting primero y de a poco fuiste avanzando cuéntanos un poco cómo fue sí yo, yo empecé mi carrera en el 2004 eh, acaba de cumplir 11 años eh, todo empezó eh, en un cumpleaños mío Fuimos a una pista con unos amigos, eh, a mí pues, siempre me encantaba ir a montar en los karts ¿no? y todo eso, pero eh, uno de los dueños de la pista es un instructor eh, de karting y dijo, pienso que tienes eh, una buena habilidad, un poco de talento, eh, te doy un curso de dos días eh, aquí en, en la pista con los karts, eh, a ver qué tal, y pues bueno, me, me fue muy bien, me gustó mucho, ahí mismo sentí esa, esa pasión que siento hasta hoy en día eh, y ahí empezó mi carrera eh, primero en los karts eh, y una, un, unos años después eh, salté a las fórmulas y, y bueno aquí estoy que esto parte de cumpleaños parte de algo ser atractivo <risa> interesante eh, a, a una profesión a algo serio empezó todo como diversión otro deporte pa para mí yo eh, en el momento al, más o menos eh, hasta los 12 años tenía era jugador de tenis 
y cuando empezó lo del cartismo pues al principio era como un hobby, era otro deporte chévere, divertido y poco a poco se fue, fue siendo más serio y más serio cuando me empezó a ir mejor, me empezó a ir muy bien, empecé a ganar carreras, campeonatos importantes en, en, en el karting y ya, ya hasta que di el paso a las fórmulas y, y ya en ese momento ya, ya pues eh, ya toda mi familia me estaba apoyando ya se sabía que, que es ya era eh, parte de ti ya, exacto ya y ya es, es lo que yo quería hacer eh, por el resto de mi vida ¿qué hace Gaby Chávez cuando no está sentado en un auto? ¿cuáles son tus hobbies? ¿qué es lo que te gusta hacer? no pues a mí me encanta me gusta ver mucho películas me encanta pues el deporte todo, todo tipo de deporte sea fútbol, tenis eh, natación lo, lo que quiera siempre estoy involucrado en el deporte eh, he hecho bastantes triatlones, medio Ironmans, cualquier cosa que tenga que ver con, con el deporte estoy involucrado y me, me encanta. ¿Y Gaby es una persona más que le gusta estar sola para estar tranquila o se relaja con un grupo, un grupo grande y le gusta formar a todo amigo y salir a, 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 a comer? Yo sí soy bastante social, me gusta <risa> estar rodeado de, de buenos amigos, de familia. Pero, pero necesito también un poco de tiempo solo, siempre para, sobre todo durante la temporada de, de carreras, es, es importante tener el tiempo uno para, para tener los pensamientos de uno a, a uno mismo, ¿no? Reflexionar también de, sobre las acciones de uno y, y pensar para uno mismo dónde puede mejorar uno, no solo en la pista, sino como persona. Cosas así también pues, siento que es importante tener el tiempo de uno eh, solo. What? No, don't. You don't, are such don't. a loser. No, I'm not. I'm not. Johnny, Johnny what are you laughing at? JP, there was at least two or three incidents of avoidable contact. He turned off the engine. You That's why he won. He's all the time. Is well, it going to be like this all year? Look who's talking. You lost with a US 2000 driver. Ah, come on. Indy come light. On. I didn't uh -huh. lose it. She uh -huh. did. That's yeah. the thing. Well, you're right. Okay, this is going nowhere. <laughs> I know. Well, let's I know. talk about Gabby. Second in the championship last year. He was second in Promazda in 2012. He wants to win. I mean, he has to win. Don't you normally don't run a third championship? Yeah, usually you have to win on your second attempt. It's very risky to enter the same championship a third consecutive time because if you win it on a third attempt, people tend to say, to say, well, it's normal. It was his third year in the series. He had a lot of experience, so it's normal for him to win. If you don't win, it's bad for your resume. So. Usually if you don't win on your second attempt, you tend to bring your career to a different trajectory like sports car or something like that. I mean, Gabby is not a rookie anymore. He knows he has to win and so far he's been up for the challenge. Talking, Talking about, about rookies, rookies yeah. yeah. Scott Anderson, Force United. Uh, we stopped by their team and uh, that's our team profile for this episode. For you, how is it to work with a team that is uh, so focused on the fans and, you know, does so much to bring them close uh, to know what, what's a real race team and give so much access to, to all the resources and everything? Yeah, it's been pretty cool. I mean, we haven't done a whole lot yet, you know, just starting out the season. So, uh, you know, but they decided on our paint scheme and the paint scheme ended up being, I think, one of the best looking cars in the field. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, it's been pretty awesome so far. Well, FanForce United, it's, it's all about the fans. You know, without the fans coming and spending their money going to the tracks and supporting us, we wouldn't have the sport. You know, the money's got to start from somewhere. And as a fan, uh, for years, that's what I did. So we have an open door policy for our fans. You know, they, they can come to our race shop. They can talk to our driver, they can talk to our team, they can touch the cars. You know, we'll put kids in the cars. I mean, we're always, anybody's always welcome to come into the you know, the transporter area or the garage at home. We'll have open house, we'll do all that kind of stuff. So we want them to be part of the team. Well, that's a great uh, policy to have. And uh, how has everything been with Scott, your new driver, the rookie? Oh, Scott, I'm gonna tell you what, what a great kid, a uh, hard worker, very smart. Uh, he's very exciting to watch run. You know what, it, it, it's been really great. Um, you know, we've had quite a few drivers in the past and Scott, he's just, you know, he's real methodical on his approach to everything. Um, I love the way that he interacts with my caliber our engineer. So your job is not only engineering anymore, it's teaching as well, right? Yeah, and that's one of the things that I kind of enjoy about the, the Indy Lights program relative to, um, you know, I, I've done Indy cars in the past and last year I did Daytona prototypes and so I kind of have to kind of put my brain back in teaching mode sometimes 
and uh, not assume that the driver knows some of the things that I'm talking about. Uh, you know, we're kind of looking at this season as a learning year, but um, you know, if you do everything right and uh, you know really focus on the right things, and uh, you know, the good results come anyway. So. Right, any uh, thoughts of going back to uh, Hindi 500 or Hindi car in general? Well, you know, there's a bunch of old guys running the 500 this year. <laughs> so, so myself and uh, and Derek Daly, who's Scott's you know manager, we're talking about getting back in cars. But no, I'm uh, I'm fine where I'm at. I've got a, a fa great family and two boys to put through college, and they don't need me back in a race car. All right. Well, best of luck for the season, and uh, we'll talk to you all throughout the year. Thanks. That's awesome that they have this policy that you can actually walk around and see the car. They even designed, the, the fans designed the car. I mean, all amazing. We need more teams like this in racing it. Yeah, I mean, it, it gives you the chance to experience firsthand what the party of racing is. They really understand what the fans are all about. Yeah, That's I, it. Fan for United. It's good to see a different perspective, you know, from the team. Well, what's, what's wrong with your voice? Johnny, are you eating? Yeah, it's dinner, man. Are you, Johnny, you get the tech capsule. We told you to wait until the end of the show. Guys, you, guys, guys. Are you eating I'm our in pizza? A, I'm in a booth, guys. Yeah, I'm having some pizza. I'm taking a few pleasures in life here. <laughs> he thinks he doesn't have enough. Johnny, always more. Don't you have to present a technical capsule? Yeah, yeah. We'll go, go. All right, keep sure right, finish and hey. get us the technical capsule. Okay. Please. All right, we've got sequential gearboxes. Obviously, all three series use them now. Um, let's take a look. Okay. All right. In the past, USF 2000 cars in the Mazda Road to Indy used the standard H-pattern gearbox, similar to what's used in regular road cars. This season, all three of the series have transitioned to a sequential gearbox, which is a bit different. If you're looking at the steering column, the lever to the right of the wheel can be pulled or pushed in a vertical motion to switch gears. Unlike road cars, the clutch is not used to change gears. The only time the clutch will be used is when the car has come to a stop or if drivers start the race from a standing start on the grid. Upshifting in a Mazda Road to Indy race car is pretty straightforward. However, it's the downshifting that can slow a driver significantly if they aren't skilled in the art of shifting. Get it right and you have a smooth downshift, which allows the driver to slow the car efficiently. Get it wrong and you can lock up the rear tires, causing the car to not only slow inefficiently, but to also lose rear stability. Good footwork and quick reflexes are key ingredients to being successful in operating the new sequential gearbox. So Tristan, uh, how do you think I did there with the gearboxes? Not too bad for a guy who chews pizza and talks at the same oh, time. Come on, he did a good <laughs> job. He did okay. I got a question for you though. Uh, is it too difficult to move from a regular gearbox you find in your car to these ones? Uh, it's okay, you know, I think motion-wise it's actually easier. You pull to shift up, you push to shift down. The hardest part, I think, is that as you shift down without using the clutch, it makes the downshifts a little rough. And there is a fine technique to find using the throttle, you know, making a little blip with the throttle pedal as you shift down to make everything smoother. So that takes a little bit of work, but after a little while you get used to it. Oh, uh, Tristan, you obviously never had a problem with it because you're so good. Oh, come but, on, uh, <coughs> don't say that. You're building a monster <laughs> right here. Told, told, I, told. I know, but hey, uh, why don't we have a look at what we've got coming up in the next episode. We're obviously second, going second. to be doing a review of everything happening at Barber Motorsports Park. Yeah, we got a beautiful team profile I did with Schmidt Peterson no, Motorsports. I got something better. Something better, yes. really? I, I was in California. What do you think I did in California? Guess, Johnny? Skateboard? Skateboard. I don't want to know because it's going to I went mad. surfing. Seriously? You, you didn't oh, take yeah. me with you? No, 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 no neither. Oh. And I got some fantastic friends that I went with. Did you, did you manage to get up or did you lose again? Uh, I'm not going to tell you. We're going to see it next episode. Okay, see it next so episode. Unfair. And folks, don't forget to follow us on RoadToIndy.tv where you can also watch all of our episodes. Use your hashtag R2IndyTV. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. See you next well, time. No, that's, is that a camera? See you next time. No, it's not. See, see you, you next, next time. time.